G'day, Brian from Beijing Tech. We're going to look at this Dell HD22Q dock. Now, this is a dual charging dock. What's that dual charging part of? It also, as you can see from the front, is a pad which can do wireless charging for your Qi charging devices. So, you like, for example, your mobile phones, your earbuds as well, too. This is what this can do. While it also is a docking station which you can connect to up to two 4K monitors which can also go up to 60 hertz so that's pretty sweet there we're going to test it out with qi charging devices as well as the temperatures and fan noise and we'll look at connecting this dock to a windows and also a macbook to see how this dock behaves with dual screens and as always i will be putting timestamps along this video so you can skip to a different section that you may be interested to save you time there is a wireless qi at the front which is capable up to 12 watts and I'll just put on my Samsung and at the moment you'll see we've got wireless charging and it's on fast wireless charging as well. Now I do have a bit of a case and also some metal bits at the back so there is a little bit of a gap uh, before it actually hits onto the back but it's still able to quite happily still do the wireless charging and also fast wireless charging. Now that was a Samsung or Android phone and I'm just going to try this with uh, iPhone here. This is older style. Again, I do see it's charging, which is great. And I see it is charging there. Absolutely fantastic to see that working fine. The Dell website also says you can actually charge your wireless earphones or earbuds. And this one I've got here is the Samsung Galaxy Buds. And this does have a wireless charging case. So I'm going to just pop this onto this Qi charge on the dock here. And at the top here, you should see if it's working or not will have a status light. At the moment it's got amber, which means it is charging the case, which is absolutely fantastic to see. There is also a power button located on the top right of the charging pad. And when you have this connected to a device and it's charging it, you'll see a status light, which is a white LED light up here. And it just indicates that it is charging that particular device. What the HD 20 do? Q dock now running, it's been running for a good two hours at the moment and also charging your computer while it's doing it for dual display. And you can see the front end is mostly about 31 degrees Celsius. And on the sides here, the ports are probably the hottest area of this port. We're running around about 44 degrees Celsius off the USB type A ports on the side. And looking on the back end here, we are only around about probably about 33 about 33 degrees on the back end here. And looking at the port wise, uh, we should only see this one hitting on one of the areas, which is the USB wireless port at the moment, which is actually 42. So that's normal that I would see from there. And looking on the other side, which is the left hand side, and we've got the USB type. C port is the hottest area, which is hitting around about 45 degrees. I just saw very quickly, uh, but mostly it's hitting about 44 degrees Celsius there. But else it's just running around about 34 to about 35 degrees Celsius. So it's not warm at all. It's actually quite a cool dock, which is good to see. And it does have a fan built into it, which is keeping it cool. And you can also see the front of it is very easily to be able to touch. And I'm at the moment have the HD22 dock I've been transferring data for probably about the last 10 minutes or so. And this is what it looks like out of from this Thunderbolt 3 external hard drive. And the front end looking at the moment is about 27 degrees Celsius at the top and the pad and about 35 degrees Celsius on the very bottom. And have a look at the back end of this dock here. While it's doing data transfers, looking probably around about 29 degrees on the top surface of this dock. And where the power board is connected, you're probably looking around about 30 degrees Celsius for the dock where the point is. And you can see this was just trying to warm it up, but we are in quite a cool temperature at the moment. We're looking at around about 18 degrees Celsius here. I've got the HD22 dock connected to two monitors and it's been running for the last two and a half hours 
doing also data transfer and just displaying to these two monitors. We're going to have a look at the fan noise of this dock. So we can see it's 37 decibels. I'm just going to completely wipe the dock off and we'll see the ambient noise. So the ambient noise is 37 decibels as well. So this dock is practically quiet. So let's test out the HQ22Q dock with a Windows laptop. Now, I've got two monitors here. I've got both 4K, they can run at 60 hertz. And the one on the left is connected to the dock via the display port. And the one on the right is connected to the dock via HMI port. And we're gonna have this connected to the Thunderbolt port on this Windows laptop. I can see here that far up, which is absolutely great to hear. And we've got one, and hopefully we'll get the second one here. There is the second one here. And let's go to display settings, and it should perform this without any issues. So I do have them running independently and in extended mode, as we can see from that, which is great to see. Now this does require 90 watts of power and it, I didn't get any slow charge errors. So that's good to see. So we are charging, absolute fantastic. And it's run off the power adapter. So let's have a look at once we close the lid down and this has now gone to sleep. That's nicely gone to sleep. And I'm going to just wiggle the mouse. This mouse and keyboard is connected to the dock via just a wireless dongle. So that's able to wake it up with the mouse, which is good to see. I'm going to put it to sleep one more time. And we'll see if we can wake it by the keyboard. Normally it should be able to wake up by keyboard if the mouse is working. So we've got that gone to sleep. So I'm just going to press enter or space bar, doesn't matter. One of those two usually, have. that's able to wake it up, which is great to see. Now I'm going to put it to sleep one more time. And we'll see if the power button is able to mirror the power button of this laptop. So it's gone to sleep where, and I'll just press that button once and see if that will wake up the laptop. It looks like it has wake up the laptop, which is good to see here. Now, again, this is now in, again, should be in extended mode. We've got one and two, which is great to see. And that's not a big issue for a Windows laptop considering this is Dell for a Windows laptop. So it should be had to no problems at charging uh, the computer as I can see that and also do extended mode and it's good to see the power button is mirroring the power button on the Windows laptop and we are able to wake up the Windows laptop using just the, even a wireless keyboard and mouse regardless of which the two it's able to do that fantastic. Now we have a look at the HD22Q, how does it react with a 14 inch MacBook Pro. Now this one has the M1 Max chip configured with it. And so without further ado, let's get this thing connected up and see how that runs. Now again, the monitor on the left hand side is connected by a display port and the one on the right is connected by HMI port. I can see that one's fired up, but the second one and the second one has fired up. Uh, but I can see it's in mirror mode. So let's bring up the display. And we do have a 4K running at the moment. As you can see, the scaling is quite small, but we'll see, have a look at it later on. Now, we're gonna firstly just have a quick check on, at the moment, I'm only able to get one display. So I'm gonna try and put on extended display and it still is only one. The two externals are mirrored. So the two monitors are mirrored. And let's bring this thing up to the other side just to make things easier. And I am going to bring in scaling. Let's bring this larger so we can have a look at it. The, one, the ultra fine is the one on the right, which is the HMI port. So that's thinks it's doing that one there at the moment. So I'm just going to go back to the default scaling. We're going to hold down Alt, go to the scaling here. And I do have 
3840 by 2160 and I can see the refresh rate is at 60 hertz, which is great to see. Now again, it has not actually defined this one separately, which is this one is usually LG HD, but this is also a 4K monitor, uh, but it's not really come back through. So we're gonna have a try a few things, see if we can get this thing to work with too. Now knowing that in my previous videos with HDMI ports and also Thunderbolt and Mac, we usually try to run through the USB Type-C port to drag, get the second external monitor working. So let's do that. Now this one's just one of those Dell adapters. It's got a HDMI port. So let's connect the HDMI port, which is the one on the right, to the dock. So I'll just pull that out. I'm gonna pull that as the HDMI port and I'm just gonna connect that up to this adapter. And then I'll plug it into this dock and we'll see how that runs. Now, we can, of course, have only one display, but the second display has not fired up at all. So let's just unplug and replug it in. And let's have a look, that's unplugged, and I'll just replug that back in. And it doesn't look like it's detected anything at all. Now, people may ask, let's try the display port instead. So why don't I try that? I'll unplug this HMI port and I'll get another adapter because this Dell adapter doesn't have HMI, but this QGM adapter does and I've got display port. So I'll plug the display port. Let me plug in the HMI port back in first and we'll pull out the display port out after that. So let's get the HMI port back in to the back. And now I've got the display port at the back here. Let's connect that up to this adapter here. And then I'll connect the adapter to the HD22 dock. And we'll see what we get. Now the HMI has brought itself back up again, but we've still got nothing on the display port monitor. So, no, it's gone to sleep. We'll just unplug and replug back in just to try it out. If we get anything at all coming from it. Oh, I heard something. So I think it's got something there. And it is still a blank screen here. So it hasn't really displayed now, just to really try to make sure it is coming up or not. So I'm gonna have this directly plug into the MacBook, just to show you that we have got the display port connected up by this QGM adapter. As you can see, we do have a third display coming in and sorry, I'm just trying to get the configuration side and I'm taking this to ultra fine. Let's put it onto the left side and I'll put this on the right hand just to make it easier so I know where things are. So there, there's one coming through. So that's extended mode there with this directly, but plugging directly into the HD22 dock has no effect at all for a MacBook uh, to have a look. So I'm just gonna connect this up again, see if we get anything, because we're gonna to try a few things in a way. So that's just brought that back up again. All right, so it's only got one monitor working. So we know with a MacBook, with the M1 chip, regardless if it's M1 or M1 Pro or M1 Max or M, this, Dock is only able to support one external monitor in extended mode for a MacBook. Now, let's have a look at what can work with this. So first off, power button, does it do anything? The power button, I'm just pressing the power button. Doesn't look like it's actually mirroring the power button for the Mac to put it to sleep or to wake it up. So let's have a try to see if it does wake it up with that on. So I'm just gonna put this into Displaying the built-in screen now it does see the two display again it's in mirror mode so it's really treating it as if one i'm just going to go default now i'm just going to bring this back to default and we still have only one display still even though i've got the, the built-in display kind of closed down now i'm going to put this computer to sleep and we'll see if the power button will wake up the MacBook. 
So I'm just going to press the power button on the right hand side. Doesn't look like we've got anything there. I'll just try one more time just to be sure. For those who don't, nothing there still. All right, we're going to just wiggle the mouse, see if that brings up anything. So if it will wake it up, it will wake it up. Now this is just a wireless Bluetooth, so that's great to see. So that's able to wake it up by the mouse. I'm just going to tell it to go to sleep again. Oop. Let's wait for it to really go to sleep. And we're going to try and just use the keyboard to wake it up as well. So I'll just see if pressing if that has woken up, which is absolutely fantastic. Now I'll just bring it inside in here. So let me just sort of log back in. Now, I'm just going to bring the scaling to a little bit different so we can actually see some of this large, just so we can have a look at it anyway. So have a look at the power. Now again, this is the 14 inch with the M1 Max, so it does require 96 watts. So more than your usual MacBook Airs or MacBook M1. Uh, Pro and this currently says power source is power adapter, which is good to see So it's able to produce enough power to run this computer and charge the computer as well for the 14 inch MacBook uh, Even for the 16 inch it should still be able to do that if you've got uh, M1 Pro If you've got M1 Max you might find that you may need uh, a little bit extra power if it's really running low on slow charge or is power drain so you might need to get an extra power, the supply power adapter for the 16 inch, uh, if you've got a very high spec version of the MacBook Pro. Uh, but this 14 inch is pretty high spec, but and it seems to run off the power adapter, which is absolutely fantastic. Overall, the Dell True Charging Dock has very good operating temperatures and pretty much operates at near silent. And as for the recommendations, I could easily recommend this for people who run Windows laptops or Windows devices who want to do dual displays. This is definitely a great dock that's able to provide enough ports and able to do dual extended displays. Now as for the Mac users, unfortunately, this is one of those docks where I can only half half recommend as it's only able to support up to one extended monitor. So if you're looking for dual extended monitors for a MacBook, then I'll definitely follow the links below as I can recommend a few other docks besides this one here. But also, I think Dell's done a great job in trying to do something different by providing uh, Qi charging wireless for even less clutter on your desk. And it's just a nice little docking station with great amount of ports. Now, I hope you find this video informative or enjoyed it. If you did, in support my channel, smash that like button for me. It does help me out. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button on the screen. I do try to upload a new video every week. And if you want to support me further, I do always have membership as well to try and do a little bit extra for you guys. And there is a join button right next to the subscribe button. And as always, imperfections and life makes it beautiful and interesting. And I'll catch you in the next video.